Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good morning, everyone. So great to be with you. Um, I'm in a new place now. You, you get the new digs I'm in here? I got a new crib, as they say, and this is my crib for um, my devo daily devotionals. I'm back in Brooklyn. Come on now, we're talking Brooklyn. So, buenos dias, and young aseo, and every other language, hello, how are you? And we're back with Sunday services at the Brooklyn Tabernacle and Tuesday night prayer meetings. And you can watch those no matter where you are on uh, live streaming the Sunday services, 9 and 12, and the Tuesday night prayer meeting that begins at 6.30, 6 y media. Uh, you can uh, watch that. And I thank you for those of you that have been watching this and your kind words, and it's been an encouragement. And that's what I'm doing it for. So we are in Romans 8, and we are in the chapter that many uh, Bible experts say is one of the top three most important chapters in the New Testament. That's a judgment call, and that's uh, people's opinion. But all Scripture is inspired and important for us, Old and New Testament. But there are weightier chapters, aren't there? So this one, as we've been studying it, is taking us out of Romans 7 and what I want to do, I can't do, and the things I say I'll never do. Whoa, that's what I'm doing. And now Paul is talking, as we've learned, about people who through redemption in Jesus Christ are not living the old flesh life, the sarks, S-A-R-X, the old man, the old sinful nature, domination. But no, now that our sins have been forgiven, we also have the Holy Spirit living in us, which is what this chapter is about. Remember, chapter 7 of Romans, there's no mention of the Holy Spirit. But now this, shall we say, uh, full salvation of not just sins forgiven, but of the new dynamic power of the Holy Spirit working in us is focused on in chapter 8. So we read yesterday, and it goes, uh, bears repeating, those who live according to the flesh are, have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit, capital S, have their minds set on what the Spirit de desires. And I told you that in Weymouth's translation of the New Testament, it's really helped me, what it says is those who live by the flesh those Christians who have been saved, whose sins are forgiven, but who uh, uh, ignore or are ignorant of the, the residing person of the Holy Spirit inside of them, they can fall back into uh, living by the flesh. And what does that do? They have their minds set on the things of the flesh, or as Weymouth says, they have their thoughts shaped by the flesh. The thinking patterns are shaped not by the Holy Spirit who lives inside of them, which would lead them to the Word of God and pure thoughts and thoughts about Jesus and thoughts of peace and joy. No, no, no. Their thoughts are shaped by that old nature and what it feeds on. But now he goes further in verse 6, and he says, the mind governed, or thoughts shaped by the flesh, is death. The mind governed by the flesh is death, condemnation, guilt, and separation from God. The flesh is incorrigible. It'll never change. So what Paul is telling us, when the thought life is governed by the flesh, there's a separation from God because the flesh could care less about God and will never change. You can't convert the flesh. The flesh is the flesh. Es lo que es. It is what it is. So that, that thought life and that kind of uh, mindset dominated by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Life and peace. Life, the full enjoyment of salvation. 
and peace. This is why a lot of Christians, a lot of times as we serve the Lord and we get dominated by the flesh, that old Jim symbol, that old you, you know, he, it's always potentially there in the equation of our spiritual life, always wanting to rear its ugly head. But as we overcome that through being controlled by the spirit, the flesh has no way to assert itself. But when it does, it takes away peace because when we're governed in our minds by the Spirit, it's life and peace. It's Jesus. That sound you heard was me tapping my foot because that's such an emphatic, wonderful truth, isn't it? That um, life and peace. This is why you can be a believer and really be miserable with no peace. Why? Because the flesh has reasserted itself we don't have to give in to it, but we do. We yield to it. And now our thought life is contrary to everything we know about God. Come on. You, we all know that is true. Christians have gone off on binges of, we call it backsliding. What is really backsliding? Backsliding is getting away from God. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So how do you wait for, get away from God? Because the thought life and, and our person is starting to be controlled by that old person, that old sinful nature, which is the whole reason why Christ came, to not only forgive us of trespasses and sins, but to create an avenue of victory and living above all of that stuff. So how is it with you and I today? As a man thinketh, the Bible says, so is he or so is she. What you think about, what governs your mind, that's not going to affect the way you behave and how you're going to react. Of course it will. So I want to ask you, so how is it with you? How is it with you and I today? Are we enjoying life and peace? Or are we like, God, where is he? I don't, you know. Are we all wrapped up with the things of this world? There's no life and peace in that. What do you think about all the time? Money? Entertainment, sports, your new phone, your new gadget. Um, there's no life and peace in that. It's just all, it's, it's moving, it's transient. You're doing good one day, whoa, you're high. Now you're on a high. But then things go wrong. But when we're governed and our thoughts are shaped by the Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, you can go through all kinds of things, but the peace of the Lord is your portion. Let's, let's, Let's walk today spiritually minded. Let's, let's ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take control of my life, my body. Let it be that temple you made it to be. And let my mind be controlled by your thoughts and desires. Amen.